So what exactly will happen when this is argued in court? Let's bring in John Malcolm. He's at the Heritage Foundation. Also, former U.S. Deputy Assistant Attorney General. John, uh, this is the first time that an emergency declaration has been used in this manner to essentially do an end run around Congress. Do you see it uh, as a constitutional issue? Well, look, uh, the National Emergencies Act gives the president fairly broad authority. It's been invoked over 60 times by presidents in the past since the act was promulgated. It's never been challenged in court. Before the act had taken place, there have been challenges to presidents who have taken unilateral action, sometimes successfully. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. There have already been, as you, you said, actually two lawsuits filed, one by Public Citizen, another by a group called Crew. Uh, both of those in the district in the ACLU and Gavin Newsom and Javier Becerra have said they're going to be filing lawsuits, and I'm sure there will be others, too. The president is not flouting the law. He is invoking the National Emergencies Act. He cited the other statutory authority that he needs to do uh, in order to claim to be able to take these funds and build a barrier along the southern border. Uh, he certainly didn't help himself by that statement that he made that he didn't need to do this. The president has been known to make statements that sometimes hurt him in court. Uh, but I don't see this as being that extraordinary. And I think the president at the end of the day is on fairly solid legal ground. It's, of course, a shame that it had to come to this. Well, the other 60 times, don't have to do with this, where Congress already made a decision on something. Uh, it was designed to uh, give the president a, a emergency power when Congress couldn't act. Do you see this, as some critics are saying, a violation of uh, the separation of the legislative and the executive bodies? No, I, I don't see it that way, although that's an argument that can be made. What the president has done doesn't fly in the face of a statute. Just because Congress couldn't agree to do something doesn't mean that the president doesn't have authority to act. If Congress had passed a law that said you can't do this and the president did it anyway, that's a constitutional crisis and a separation of powers But what about the Congress issue? power of the purse? I mean, it's Congress that has the power of the purse. And in yes, this way, the do. critics are saying the president is uh, actually trying to grab some of that power for the executive branch. See, I don't quite see it that way. The president isn't creating money. He is reallocating money that has been already appropriated by Congress, and he is citing federal law that enables him to do this. So he couldn't get Congress to specifically appropriate funds for this purpose. But he's not printing money. He is taking money that Congress has previously appropriated that is otherwise unobligated, and he is repurposing well, it. Well, some of and the money is, is, some of the money is obligated. Sorry to interrupt, but it is obligated. Sure. I mean, you get, you get money for uh, military installations and this sort of thing. There's the Treasury forfeiture fund. So they're, they're, he's taking money that has been obligated already well, and just shifting it to something else. Well, the Treasury funds are not obligated. In fact, the Treasury funds uh, are specifically unobligated and allow the Secretary of the Treasury to reallocate those funds. Then there is money from the Drug Interdiction Program. That specifically provides that he's able to build a fence uh, along the southern border to prevent uh, drug smuggling from coming in. With respect to the $3.6 billion for military construction projects, you are absolutely correct. However, once the President declares uh, a national emergency, the Secretary of Defense is given uh, the authority to engage in military construction projects that are designed to support the deployment of, uh, of our military, and the president has deployed our military. One of the arguments will, that will be made is that this is a manufactured crisis, or that he doesn't need the military, or that building a barrier along the southern border goes beyond providing support for the troops. That's the kind of argument that we'll see played out in court.